we'll be able to do a little bit more precise analysis than we have with these more uh, summary nodes. Um, and then uh, these nodes are hooked together with uh, uh, edges where you have uh, label labeled by, by the fields. Um, so here we have value pointing to a top element. So uh, the top is basically the opt-out saying that uh, I'm not going to go any further into it, describe any further this part of the memory. So it can represent any subgraph, but uh, the only requirement is that there'll be no uh, sort of structure pointing back into uh, the blue nodes up here. Um, otherwise, and then we have that uh, the edges here will approximate all ingoing edges. So we have to know all, everything that goes into uh, a cell in order to be able to make sure that there are no uh, hidden ways of getting ac to access to a memory, which is the sort of basic property we want to ensure. So that's the abstract description that we use of uh, memory. And uh, so this uh, memory, uh, this shape graph over here, would describe a memory where uh, x is pointing to uh, uh, a list up here, uh, where these uh, blue elements are, uh, and with, with elements uh, down here, the red elements. And notice that there might be other ways of uh, getting to these uh, elements marked as uh, sort of shallow and and that's okay with, with that uh, structure. The, what, when the, what's important is the blue elements, and the blue elements here over here should respect to blue elements over here, which I mean that, that you cannot access from elsewhere. So that will, uh, this uh, shape graph here is a, a correct representation of this memory here. It's also a correct representation of this memory where you have an extra, another local variable that can access this structure. It's okay as long as it's local because it's going to disappear once we return uh, this as a result of a method. And you still have, your, you can access these red elements down here that we will not uh, be caring about. So they're described by top. What it does not represent is of course that uh, when you have something where you're going to get access to what we said was going to be uh, unshared, uh, that will not be acceptable by, uh, this uh, is not correctly described by this graph. So, uh, this thing will just be to, to uh, this uh, element here, but not the first one, is described by this more approximate graph, where we just say that the first element here is, uh, um, and the first, only the first element, is uh, uh, isolated. So, um, in the, uh, you have a paper where describing all this uh, formalism, and uh, just, uh, so, uh, the, the graphs here are described by uh, an environment that um, uh, associates uh, uh, local variables to nodes in this graph, say what they point to. And then we have uh, uh, edges that uh, links nodes in the graph together. And we have this information down here, the theta, that says that point some, of, some of the nodes in our graph have this property that they represent one, one uh, and just one uh, memory uh, cell in the real memory. Um, now, how do you uh, check uh, a copying method? Uh, well, you start from uh, the description of the policy over here. So uh, we take this, we look at the annotations, how they are marked, and then from that you extract uh, a graph structure uh, that represents the policy. So here we had the first element where we said that, well, the, the value for your field is shallow, so we don't care about that. And then it points to something else, and this, again, uh, now this is uh, to something that which, uh, has a policy that's recursively defined by this <coughs> copy here. So uh, here we just tie the knot on the recursion and says, so this element would just represent possibly several uh, memory cells, and uh, there will be next elements that points to the same, these cells, and then there'll be value fields that point to something that we don't guarantee. Then we have a type system to check that uh, memory, uh, and sorry, the method M will satisfy uh, such a, a graph type here. Um, now the type inference, uh, is, some type inference is required when several uh, flows of control can meet at program points because different kinds of memory might meet, so you have to find the sort of the best representation of uh, what is the summary of all these memories that can flow into points. And in particular, we need a subtyping relation on graph types that says when one uh, shape graph is a correct approximation or correctly abstracted into another. Uh, I'm not going to give you that, those details here, the technical details are in a paper, um, but we'll just use that in the following. What I'm going to do is briefly explain some of two of the uh, simplest typing rules and then give you an example of how this works. So uh, when you have assignment, when you want to assign y to x, then you look into your graph, find what x points to, 
find what y points to, and now you just take the pointer from x and make that uh, point to the cell where uh, what that y points to. So that's a very simple uh, update on the uh, actual environment structure here. Um, so the uh, when you want to uh, update uh, a field of one of these memory cells, so here we have <coughs> x points to a node in it represented by node n with a field f. And when you want uh, to assign y to that field, well, then you just uh, make f point to uh, the node that pointed to by y over here instead of uh, pointing to whatever it was pointing to before. And we can do this because in the case where we have these simple nodes that only represent one cell because we know that it only represents one cell and doesn't have to rep summarize several other cells that might point to other things. Uh, people in the field will know this is called a strong update. Uh, there are, of course, also rules <coughs> for nodes when uh, this is not the case. Uh, there's a whole uh, type system that explains for every uh, element in the type, uh, in the language, how uh, you can reason about structure and how it evolves uh, during the uh, <coughs> execution of the program. Instead of giving you the rest of the uh, typing rules, just let me show you a little case study that we did on a doubly linked list as uh, they presented in this uh, Java uh, library. Um, so we took this code and uh, took the definition here. So um, this works and well, uh, it's uh, with, with generics. So we had to, and uh, there are some method calls that we had to inline. But basically, we were able to analyze the, the code uh, presented here. So we have a doubly linked list of, uh, here's the definition of it. But you want to look at the picture probably with a header. And then there's a spine where two elements, where, well, where there's the next element and a previous element. And they, then they have elements. Uh, uh, so that gives you the spine uh, of the list, and then there are elements uh, associated to, to any of these uh, spine elements up there. Um, the um, copy policy that we would to enforce here is that uh, we make a deep copy of the uh, <coughs> spine of the list, uh, but not but a shallow copy of the. Uh, we, we do not copy the actual elements, so we make a shallow copy of the of the structure. So uh, the, the do goal was now to verify that the clone method proposed by the library actually uh, respects this, uh, this copy policy. Um, so here's the code of it. I don't think I'll go into many details of it, but uh, uh, it starts by calling out, uh, by assigning having a local variable uh, clone, which puts it, puts it just set to null. So that gives you that kind of memory structure uh, at the outset. Uh, the clone will just be pointing to a particular element that we use to represent nil. And then uh, we take, uh, the first thing it does is to call the, the cloning method from the super class, and then uh, that will give you something, and then you look up the policy associated with that, and you get that this is this basic policy that just assures you that you get something fresh in the beginning, but you don't know uh, anything about uh, what else, about the thing, what it gives you elsewhere. And then it uh, creates a new memory cell uh, that, uh, <coughs> and puts it into the header field of the clone, and again, uh, we don't know, we, this is initialized to, to nil uh, in the beginning, so with these different fields, so now you have this kind of, this uh, graph structure to represent your memory. And you uh, put up the uh, references uh, that you have in the uh, next field here so that they uh, point to this kind. So for the moment, we have a fairly precise uh, uh, structure, uh, representation of the memory structure going on here. And then we enter the list, the loop, that will uh, then copy the, the actual list. Um, and this is where we have a little, uh, need a little bit of static analysis magic because this description here is not going to be representative of the end result of, the, uh, <clears throat> of what's going on, of all the uh, memories that uh, will pass by this program point. So we have to uh, approximate a little bit and make it a little bit larger in the description. Uh, we actually want something that says that uh, this is going to be several elements over here, uh, still uh, with these uh, having the annotated with deep. Uh, but uh, now not only just one element over here, but several memory elements. Um, so we would like to replace uh, that by this description by that description over here, the more general one. Uh, and that's okay because we have this subtyping relation that tells us when it's, allowed, it's possible to do this. So we'll uh, proceed uh, with uh, this, uh, and then we'll, we'll go back, and then we create each uh, entry, uh, allocate each entry, uh, do the uh, pointer arithmetic to uh, initialize these things. Uh, and then now uh, we are setting up the uh, previous header uh, <coughs> uh, of the new entry to point here, this one, to point to the uh, previous uh, uh, element of over here. So we'll see that now this has to 
point over there. And then new entry is going to uh, be assigned uh, to uh, this uh, previous next field over here. So which means that we basically have to merge this node into that, but it's okay because this can uh, actually fit in there. And it's, again, it's some tune by uh, this description. Um, so the analysis will go through and we'll end up here. Now we have to go back and check that what we have at the end of the loop is consistent with uh, what we uh, had at the beginning of the loop. And uh, that's again the subtyping relation that tells us this. So uh, we can uh, conclude that uh, that's okay. This is a correct description. Static analysis will allow us to conclude that now we have an invariant of the method. And that will be the result that we'll return something which respect the policy. So uh, that was uh, to show you a little bit more of how this works on a uh, not completely trivial uh, example of uh, manipulating these uh, references. The, um, we've actually uh, conducted some uh, preliminary experiments with a prototype of the uh, implementation tested on, the, uh, on a GNU class pass. Uh, we found 285 clone methods here. Uh, the large majority of these uh, actually could be verified by this prototype, say, okay, yeah, they, they do respect the basic clone method that says that you can't just return a reference to what I gave you, the same reference as I gave you. Uh, and uh, what's more interesting as well is that uh, for uh, 78 of these methods, they actually produce more complex graphs than uh, we are in the process of uh, understanding what uh, they found there. But it just means that, the, I mean, the information is correct, but uh, it shows also they can just say more than just the basic uh, cloning policy. So that's uh, sort of launching the anal analyzer on something that's uh, existing. And then we have also done some case studies where you annotate with more complex policies and you verify these things, in particular this application for the uh, GNU XML style sheet. Um, I'm not going to talk about my company, but just to explain you why we uh, did this in particular, uh, sort of part of it. It was uh, part of a, a project uh, commissioned by the French National Agency for Security of Information System. Uh, who wanted to, to know about sort of security of, uh, of, of uh, have a security analysis of Java and JVMs. So uh, part of this, we developed, well, analysis of language features and pro secure programming guidelines, and in particular, the strengthening of uh, JVM by doing some extended bytecode verification, where this is part of the uh, idea to put in strengthen uh, ver verification together with an analysis for secure object initialization. And the whole uh, uh, project is going to end up with a security certification or evaluation of these uh, security enhanced JVMs. Uh, exercise your French and go to this site if you want. Uh, there's more about information about it. So uh, I'm about done. Uh, cloning uh, has been left to the programmer to make sure that uh, what, when we say we clone a method, then uh, it does what it should do. Uh, it can often be a source of misunderstanding because what one thing about what a clone should work is not uh, understood by the other. And uh, well, in any case, there are no sort of semantics to these methods. So we thought it would be nice to provide a language for specifying policies for these copy methods. Language should be simple, but it should at least, and, and it should be possible to annotate just part of things that you want to cover by your security policy. And then you can, these policies can be checked. Uh, there's a type system which has been implemented and formalized. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for your attention. It's come time for some questions. Yes? 